What's up guys? I am Dr. John R. Adolph and today I'm checking out video clips of people who say, I don't believe in God. Hey. Hey there. I'm Josh. I'm Erica. Hi. I'm Emily. Erica. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hey. Hi. Nice to meet you. And Nina? Yes, I'm, I'm Nina. Erica. Nice to meet you. So I'm a Christian. How would you identify? Uh, atheist. Atheist. Non-believer. Okay. So do you believe that like there's there's no God or there's something out there and you don't know what it is? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I identify as an atheist. Mm -hmm. If like agnosticism and atheism is, is like a spectrum, I'm like somewhere in it. I think that when we die, it's lights out, and that's the blissful end to all of it. Is and that bliss though? Lights it out? is. So let me ask you a question. What do you believe exists beyond the universe? It's like the area where our minds kind of exist, not the human, not the tangible. I don't think that that exists either. You don't? I don't. I think that everything that exists mm -hmm. is what exists right here right now mm -hmm. in this moment in your body. I was raised in the Catholic community. I just remember the first thing we talked about was Adam and Eve. And I just remember being like, that's just like a little story. And culturally, we're Hindu. Personally, for me, it felt like a lot of these, a lot of the stories of it, are, they're just like stories. Uh, there's a lot of like people with multiple arms and like angels are blue, uh, which is like not real. So I was raised Mormon. Uh, my mom helped run the Relief Society. My dad was a bishop for a long time. My wow. grandpa was a bishop. I was the very first member of my family to walk away from it all. And they respond to that. Not well at first. <laughs> I grew up similar to you, but mine was a Pentecostal church called the Church of God in Christ. And my father was a preacher. My mom was over the choir, um, but there was a lot. Okay, so I cannot go anymore without making at least this one comment. Kudos to Erica Campbell for having the boldness and the faithfulness and inclusion to sit down with atheists and agnostics and even engage them in such a loving way. However, I just have to throw this in the omelet while I'm making breakfast. I have to put this in my gumbo while I'm making lunch. To suggest that there are creatures and creation without having a creator makes no philosophical sense. So for everybody who's like checking this out right now, just think about this. If there's a shoe, there's a shoemaker. If there's jeans, there's a jean designer. If there's a car, there's a car maker. If there is a keyboard, there's like a keyboard maker and designer. So philosophically, the idea about God not existing affirms the existence of God itself because you cannot deny the existence of something that doesn't already exist. Come on, let's keep going. A lot of things that didn't always make sense to me, like why we were so poor, you know, you know if you're different <laughs> Jesus, everything's supposed to work out right, you know. But the same way, I wouldn't doubt love because people have gotten love wrong. And that's kind of how I feel about God. And I think it's very reassuring to me that after this is over, there's something greater. So most people who don't believe there was some, you know, traumatic church experience or some mm -hmm. long line of this doesn't make sense, this doesn't make sense, this doesn't make sense. Okay, y'all don't make sense, so maybe he doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I do find fault with like Catholicism in general. We're not really like practicing, mm -hmm. so we weren't like praying or like studying or anything. And so I just kind of like fell away from that as like, as a religion. I got kicked out of Sunday school because I was arguing with the teacher mm -hmm. about the age of the earth. In six days, 6,000 years, I'm like, um, but dinosaurs. I grew up in a church where secular music was a saying, everybody was the devil, you know, you can't interact, you know, it's gonna infiltrate you. My mom, her favorite saying growing up was that the devil gets to you in little ways. Yes. Like the first time I wanted a mohawk at nine <laughs> years old, she was like, devil gets to you through your hair. Like, yeah. <laughs> I got really lucky and I have like great parents and you know, they were like, you know, be okay, hold up, person, wait, wait. like help each other. Okay, so I have to stop at least once more to say this. One of the failures of the church is not answering the tough questions that the world has for us. Uh, and we live in a generation of people who won't just take youth's faith as an answer or do it because it's the right thing or just believe it. The truth of the matter is, People would rather believe nothing than believe something that they don't quite comprehend. So if you're sitting there and you're saying there's 6,000 years of history in the Bible and you got artifacts at 6 million years old, somebody lied. Or maybe, just maybe, someone didn't explain it well. And so the best way to explain the inexplicable is to deny that it was is just purposely evident. And so that's what we kind of feel here. Um, 
I have to laugh about this. So many religious people have hurt other people. It's unbelievable. It's not funny, but it's hilarious because people of faith can sometimes be the worst people. You can't wear makeup. You can't have a mohawk. You can't get a tattoo. You can't, you can't, you can't. So it becomes this prison instead of being a place where you're free because God loves you. Okay, wait. I feel like Eric is about to tap in the Let me check the rest out. They're out. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so I feel like my moral compass is good. I, I hope so. I think so. <laughs> I'm working on it. The core of Mormon belief is the Holy Bible, uh -huh. the King James Version yeah. specifically. Yeah. Every time I read something, what I saw was a twist for human gain. Mm -hmm. I know all the same stories and had, I had the very same questions. Um, and what I feel like, you know, what I know the Bible is, it is all an example of how crazy and chaotic our world is. If you believed in God, what would that look like to you? I wow. feel like if there was a God, I think it would be something that kind of unimaginable that I couldn't mm -hmm. like process as a human yeah. being. Do you believe in life after? You know, I I don't. You know, before I was like, I don't know, maybe like real energy, like mm -hmm. what happened? So here is another caveat that I think ought to just make you pull your hair out, right? What if there is no God? What if when you die, booyah, lights out, pushing up daisies or stuck in a cement box called a mausoleum? What if there is no God? That the whole thing is a hoax, people are pulling your hair, yanking your weave and messing up the taste of your breakfast, right? And you die and discover that there is one. What do you lose and what do you gain? Now let's say there is a God and I spend my life trying to serve that God and die and find out there is a throne and there is a God and he did give commands and he did create the earth. We both die and we find out that there is one. What do I gain and what do I lose? You know, people buy insurances in case crap happens, right? You know, you hope you don't have to use the policy, but the truth of the matter is you may. So hold on, let me tell you what this video does to me, man. It makes me say, thank God for insurance. Hold on, just in case I have a wreck. Just in case the house gets hit by a storm, right? But pity the people who don't have insurance. Woo! Listen, my friends, the beauty of this video today that blesses me, Erica Campbell, I love the earth you stand on, girl, is this. What you are showing us is if you have car insurance just in case you have a wreck or life insurance when you die or a house and policy and insurance just in case the house is damaged, it may pay to have a blessed assurance for your soul. Because if you die and find out there is something there, there's no coming back. Hold on. Let's feel the rest of this. Happen the stuff we're not like and nobody knows. And that's the mm -hmm. crazy thing. Right. And uh, but. Uh, very recently, actually, my twin brother passed away this summer. Mm -hmm. And so I've been, that. thank you, but I've been, you know, like searching for him and I've been like trying to be kind of like open, like if, you know, if it is like a thing, like, please yeah. freaking talk to me. You know yeah. what I mean? And like, I just, I haven't, I haven't felt it. Yeah. I haven't felt him. I haven't seen him. Yeah. And so that kind of, for me was like, okay, like he's just, yeah. he's just dead. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, something that I'm just kind of like, okay, like mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just never gonna see him again he's still you know with me every day and I think about him every single day but it's like I just you know I was I was open for it and mm -hmm. I, I still am like yeah. if, if something were to happen or whatever yeah. but like you know me thinking about him every day and remembering him and everything that I do it's like I feel like that for me is like enough mm -hmm. you know every time I look at any form of organized religion the only thing I see is division mm -hmm. more wars have been fought over religion than mm -hmm. anything else yeah whereas you know, when people look at people of faith and you're looking for God, sometimes that can be the worst place to look. I tell people who visit us all the time, man, people came to church looking for God, but they run into us. <laughs> and we're a far cry from being God. So when you see division in church, it makes you say things like this guy is saying, all I see is division. That's the last thing I want to see. But here's what I want to tell you. There's division in your family. Hadn't stopped you from being kin. Sometimes there's a mess and division amongst your friends, but they're still your friends even though they're a mess. Isn't it amazing how we expect perfection from church? 
instead of progress from people of faith? You see, here's the truth. There's a big gulf between human perfection and personal progress. And here's the truth. I'm still a work in progress myself. So I tell people all the time, if you're looking for God, don't look at me every day, all day. Because I still have some stuff God is working on. Okay, wait, let me feel the rest of this. I love this, by the way. When I look at a world with no religion, mm -hmm. you suddenly, everyone has to own up to just what they are and who they are. They yeah. can no longer hide behind and say, well, I, I won't bake a cake for these gay couple because my religion says that I don't have to. Mm -hmm. You can't hide behind that. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be conflict in religion because religion is man-made. You know how you see these movies and there's always a devil on one shoulder mm -hmm. and an angel. I really think that's real. I think there's always a battle for the best of us and the worst of us. If there was one question of God that you could ask if you believed in God, what would you ask? Wow. That's a really hard one. <laughs> Is it? Wow. <laughs> I, uh, Girl, I ask everything. <laughs> and there would probably be a lot of general just like whys. Mm -hmm. um, but he cares about you. And that's what I know Does for he? sure. <laughs> yes. You. What makes you happy? What I'm, makes you sad? I feel so small. And no. like the concept of a God, it feels mm -hmm. so big, like I said. Yeah. And I feel so small. And it seems impossible to me that anything that oversees like mm -hmm. our whole world or our whole universe mm -hmm. would have time for me. Absolutely. <laughs> God loves you so much that he knows how many hairs are on your head. Wait, hold on. Not only do you matter to God, but he's the next breath that you take. How you're perceiving God could really be the whole issue about your walk with God, whether you're an atheist, agnostic, or a Christian, or someone who struggles every day like the rest of us do. At the end of the day, um, when people search for God, here's what you will discover. God's been searching for you. He's not the one who needs a God. He is God. It's us that can't make it without him. It's amazing, however, to see how many people have been wounded, confused, hurt, bewildered, cast aside, or rejected by church people, which makes everybody say, see there, you can't depend on this God because bad things still happen. Train wrecks, car wrecks, natural disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods. If God cared so much, where is he when all hell breaks loose? <laughs> Here's the good answer for the day. He's in the same place he was sitting when they crucified his son on his throne. It's just that his ways are not our ways. His habits are not our habits. His modus operandi is not ours. But this is a good video. Hold on, I'm gonna get back to it. I think um, that there's still a lot of questions there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even from what you've said, still a lot of questions. And I think that's the best way to be, like mm -hmm. to always ask why. The whys are the whys. Why do I feel this way? Why don't I believe? Could I believe again? Right. You know, what could cause me to believe again? Because mm -hmm. clearly there's something that caused me not to believe. If I told you that I would pray for you, what would you ask me to pray for? Wow. That's a great question. Wow. Probably not for me, but for like my family, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just for them to be like well and good and happy. Yeah. From my perspective, everything you've said, you can do without any religion. And it's completely freeing for me. The most free I ever felt was the day I walked away mm -hmm. and said, I don't have to believe in any of this stuff anymore. Because to me, mm -hmm. God, religion, mm -hmm. all of it, it's completely superfluous. To you. So watch this, guys. Let's suppose there is no God, there are no rules, and anything goes. Hold on, wait, wait. Suppose there are no commandments, there's no right, there's no wrong. It's just what you choose to do. What kind of world would we live in? Hold on. If there are no rules, that means that your children don't just have to obey because there is no God saying, children, obey your parents, but it's right. So ima imagine for a moment, just for 15 seconds, what a world would look like if there was no God. Then there would be no rules, no right, no wrong. In fact, there would only be self-claims to self-aggrandizement. Do what you want to do. Murder? Who says that's wrong? That's acceptable. Hold on. You can do what you like because it's you who's in control. 
You see, my friends, here's the real deal. And I smile because it's good news to hear comments like these for us and for me if you're a Christian. Because the real deal is without God, we'd have total chaos. It's because of God that we have the order that we have. And the rebellion that we feel comes from the fact that really we want to do our own thing. I'm so thankful, man, for this video. I'm just overwhelmed by it. And I love this gentleman's comments most because you can tell deep within him is a longing for freedom. And the freedom he felt was walking away from the rules and regulation, sometimes even the tyranny and bigotry of the church. Well, I say to you, the real freedom is knowing that there is a God and saying to us and yourselves, he's not just some God on a throne. He's my friend. Hold up. Let me continue, because this is good for me. I hope it's great for you. The human existence. You don't need it. You can live a happy, productive, good, charitable life without it. I believe in, you know, if there's a good, there has to be a bad. You know, yeah, we yeah. can't always explain some of the complexities and craziness of this world, but I think God brings gravity to it all, to the question. I, I love hearing what you have to say. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I necessarily agree with all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe that God knows you. He knows your name. He knows how many hairs are on your head. And your beautiful hair, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I had to purchase mine. <laughs> Nevertheless, I think he knows everything about you and wants to get more, wants to know more. This has been such a great conversation and you're such a warm, like, I feel really like comfortable <laughs> here. Good. Um, yeah, just this has been really great. Awesome. It's been amazing talking to you. Great talking to you, Emily. I will well. be praying for you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> so guys, here is my summation and conclusion. Love wins. Uh, the reason that these people feel comfortable with Erica is because love wins. I believe that people are just waiting to have their questions answered, their thoughts considered, and even their suffering addressed. And I'm thankful to have you check this out because I hope to be doing more of it in the future. Okay, that's my time. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer.